Awesome, thank you. Welcome to my presentation, What the Luck, So Many Events, So Little Time. My name is Miriam, and currently I work as a program manager for Microsoft Defender ATP at a company, at a very little company called Microsoft. And um, before I joined this team, I was working as a premier field engineer that's some kind of a consultant, but we all have different names for different roles, so it is called premier field engineer, and this is uh, the role when I created the open source tool event list that I will talk about during this presentation. So the presentation and the open source tool is my content and it's not officially supported by Microsoft. So if you have any issues or feature requests or whatever, contact me. Do not contact Microsoft. And I think you can contact me best on GitHub or Twitter. So, starting with... I think you all have worked with detecting adversaries or you want to start to. So when it comes to attacking your environment, the attacker has all the time in the world he or she wants to, to get to know your environment, to find out what information are your employees posting on Xing, on LinkedIn, who are your administrators, who is likely to click on phishing mails, who will open attachments. And once the attacker has the information, the actual attack does not take longer than 48 hours until the attacker has completely hold of your environment. But until you notice that you have an attacker in your environment, most of the time it takes more than 200 days to, t to detect that there is actually a breach or there was a breach and that the attacker is having fun in your environment doing all the things that uh, they like to. If you detect it at all. And during my work as a premier field engineer, I worked with a lot of customers who were not even aware that they had suspicious events in their environments. So in reality, unfortunately, the chance is high that many companies do not know that they are already breached. And in the past, there were a lot of, co of, of companies also saying when I talked with them, well, yes, we do have a firewall, a physical firewall, and we also do have an antivirus tool. We are safe, of course. Well, that was maybe 10 years ago, because also the attackers noticed that it's not that easy to just breach a hardware firewall or also to uh, just go around your antivirus tool. And so they developed a new kind of attack and attacking the weakest link, which is... Yes, I heard it over there somewhere. The users, the identities. And actually, it is really easy to compromise your users because what we are all human beings, we have trust in good people and it can happen to everybody. I also... When I was working as an administrator, I also had a colleague who I really value highly, who had really a lot of knowledge and also security knowledge. And well, nevertheless, he was working um, with uh, apprentice ships. And someday he received an email 
stating, oh yes, I really want to work for your company. And here is my resume. And I prepared a nice Excel sheet and to see what I can do, what I'm able to do, you just have to activate your macros. Easy as, as, easy as it. And guess what? The colleague was convinced that it was actually somebody applying for an apprenticeship and he activated the macro and seconds after he did, he just realized what he just did. There was ransomware running on his system. I, I, my colleague was sweating, I was sweating. Well, we isolated his PC, but nevertheless, we had a lot of work to get him running again. And it can happen to everybody. And therefore, if the attacker sends a malicious document or a malicious link to the user, he tries to steal the identities and tries to move on to steal even more identities, lateral movement, and in the end, to gain hold of everything in your organization to be the domain admin, to be the enterprise admin, and to do everything that they want to. So I've been working with customers trying to harden their systems, trying to improve their detection, and to harden Windows systems. Microsoft provides security baselines in the Microsoft Security Compliance Toolkit, which you can download for free. And uh, in there you have baselines for each system that you can find there, well, for each supported system, sorry. Um, and you also have tools to analyze what we are recommending there. And so if you activate those security baselines in your environment, and be careful, do not just put it in there and activate them, please be careful with that and test what you're doing. But if you're activating those baselines, there are... Um, those recommendations for your audit policy. That means you, if you turn on several audit policies, you get a lot more events that you can use to detect attackers in your environment. And if you turn on the audit policy, um, there are some e events that are being generated but who can tell which events are being generated? Anybody here who would say, okay, yes, I know exactly what we are doing? No one? A little bit? <laughs> hey, no, I don't know. <laughs> I, just, I just created something that does the work for me. So... Um, in the beginning, I started to work with all these event logs. And when I started, I was, I was barely overwhelmed because they have so many events, so many different event IDs. And we do have a document which has 754 pages where we have an exact documentation of all the events that we have. And I started to work with a customer and I helped this customer to build their SOC. And um, the customer just had their event logs to rely on. And they were asking me, can you help us to tell us what are the important events? So it was a tough work. I used this document. And at some point, the customer also asked me if we apply those security baselines that you showed us, what events are being generated? Is there a documentation on this? What exact events are being generated if you turn on this audit policy? And I was like, well, no. And so the customer asked me to write down all the events that are being generated if you apply this certain baseline. 
I was not very excited about this task, to be honest, because it was a lot of work. So, well, I just started to analyze the first baseline to write down the events that will be generated if you apply it. And the, the customer showed up at my desk and told me, oh, why are you doing it? Can you also please analyze this baseline, this baseline, this baseline? Oh, and while you're just at it, also this baseline too. And I was like, no way. That is so much work that I can't do it while during my engagement. And so I had the idea I need to automate it. And this was when the first version of event list was born. I started an Excel document. I wrote some macros. And this is what the first version looked like. So you had an Excel sheet. You had the option to import baselines. And you could choose a baseline from the drop-down once it was populated and to generate an event list for this particular baseline. So you had an exact overview which events are being generated when applying the baseline. What is the event about? Also a link to more uh, information about it and also the recommendation what exactly you should monitor if you only should look for success or for failure events. And um, yes, that was the first list of event list. And the customer was happy at that time. I moved on. I took event list and showed it to the next customer who I also helped building their sock. And the customer was pretty excited about event list. And since they were just starting to work with MITRE ATT&CK, they asked me, that's pretty cool, the tool. Could you maybe also implement MITRE ATT&CK so that we are just seeing uh, with one glimpse which events are for which MITRE ATT&CK technique? And I was like, mm, sure, let me think about. So who of you has heard of MITRE ATT&CK? So a lot, not everybody. So what is MITRE ATT&CK? MITRE ATT&CK is a framework to systematically map attackers' behaviors into categories to help closing gaps in organizations um, to build their cyber defense stronger and to detect better. It's just a framework of what can attackers do in your environment. And we also have a workshop on Friday, the MITRE ATT&CK workshop, organized by Freddy. Um, I don't know if there are still places, but if you, they are. So if you are excited about MITRE ATT&CK, please go to Freddy and join the workshop. It will be awesome from what I heard. So this is what it looks like on their website. So you have several areas. Those are the headlines. Um, you have the initial access. You have the execution, the uh, lateral movement, and all the steps that lead an attacker to compromise your environment and to act there. And you have several techniques categorized to those areas. So this, for example, is a technique, pass the hash. I think if you have worked with Microsoft Security, you all have heard of pass the hash. And this is what it looks like. It does not give you explicit actions like configure this and that, but it is more like a recommendation to inform you what is this technique about 
and what can you do against it? And coming back to this beautiful mighty attack flower, which is not just a flower, but it is just the techniques mapped to data sources. My tool event list at this moment just concentrates on this little area, speaking of the Windows event logs. So, okay, I was working with this customer and one requirement was, okay, the tool should support MITRE attack. And when you're building a SOC from the ground, well, what else do you need? Or what are your pain points? What are your pain points? Louder? Exactly, the amount of notifications. So what actually is happening there, how to spot which notifications are important. So first thing, we have already the question, if you apply baselines, which events will be generated? the amount of the notifications, because, well, sometimes you maybe have a very restricted storage. That means that you cannot save everything and you cannot forward everything to your seam. So which events are important? Which events should we forward? And last but not least, if you have all this data and if you have all these events, what do you do with it? So, well, I heard from some customers, well, at least we can do forensic analysis if we are getting breached. Is this what you want to do? No. So, Last but not least, you want to see what is in your environment and you want to hunt. So last but not least, you maybe want to create hunting queries to detect ongoing attacks or ongoing suspicious activities in your environment. And those were the questions that I asked myself when um, creating event list in the new version, and I will show you what event list looks like and how it works. Okay, so you can download event list on GitHub. You can also, it is also on PowerShell Gallery. That means you can just install it with install module name event list uh, force. And to open it, still need some improvement with the naming, yes, but you open it with open GUI. And it takes some time, and there it is. So this is event list. So the original functionality to import baselines and to generate an event list is still there. And it comes with some pre-populated uh, baselines. So if you want to see which events are being generated, or which MITRE attack areas and techniques are being addressed by that baseline, you can just select the baseline, and the MITRE attack areas and techniques are being populated. So you can just see with one glimpse what, what areas you cover. You still can generate an event list, 
And now you have the choice between baseline events only and all MITRE attack events. So the baseline events only is the purpose behind this is to just see if you activate this baseline, then you just want to see, okay, which events are being generated? What's actually, what's the event doing? Can I get some more documentation on this? What is the audit recommendation? And so what, what should you monitor? Should you monitor success and failure? Should you only uh, monitor success or failure? And is it recommended to monitor for this e event? Because maybe some events are not very, very valuable for your environment. So, but if you want to say, okay, I'm just interested in several MITRE attack areas or in several techniques. You can also say, okay, I just want to see the MITRE attack events that are being generated. And at the, this stage, I need to do some more database documentation work. So you see the event ID, but not all the events are already uh, have a description. So if you want to, to support the event list and if you want to, uh, also help with the event list, please go ahead and, uh, send me a pull request on GitHub. So, and with the last version of event list, it is not only possible to import Microsoft baselines, it is also possible to import a backed up GPO. So I use the GPO that I created for Black Hat Arsenal. And there it is, my backed up GPO. And you can see with one glimpse what MITRE attack areas and techniques are being covered by that one. And you can also delete the baseline if you don't want to have it in your system anymore. And you can also delete all the baselines if you don't trust the baselines that I imported. And if you think, well, maybe there are baselines that are more actual than the ones provided or that the ones that come with the event list. Okay, so first functionality, oh, and of course, you can also export it as a CSV. And let me just open. A CSV, a CSV that I prepared, It's just it just looks like this, and you can just import it into another Excel sheet or into other data. It's like how you would like to process it. Okay, so this is the first question solved. What events are being generated if you apply a certain baseline? Next questions. Uh, ne next question. Which events are important? Which events do I want to forward? And well, yes, you could use all the events that are being generated here. You could generate an event list and say, okay, I just copy and paste all the event IDs. But actually, that's pretty uncool, right? So maybe you just want to generate an agent config for all the events that are important to you because the events that have no security recommendation in there, you just don't want to forward them to your maybe Splunk or ArcSight or whatever you use. So at this moment, um, event list supports Splunk. So you can just choose all the MITRE attack areas and techniques that you want to forward. And you can just select Splunk Universal Forwarder in the Generate Agent Config dialog. And you just get the snippet 
which you can just copy and paste into your configuration to ease your work. You can also use ArcSight to generate the configuration for ArcSight or for other XPath-based uh, theme systems to generate the configuration snippet, which you can just copy and paste into your system. And Easter egg, Microsoft Defender at this moment does not need event IDs, so nothing to do here. So maybe you also want to select several MITRE attack areas and want to create a GPO of, out of that. This is also possible with a Generate GPO button. So you choose the location where your GPO should be saved. Say OK. And it is generating your very own MITRE ATT&CK GPO. You see here in the machine, Microsoft, Windows NT, Audit, and here is your audit CSV for your advanced audit logs. So at this moment, only advanced audit logs are supported. I also plan on supporting uh, Sysman, uh, but this is something in the future. Yay, we just generated a GPO. We are a domain controller. Yay. OK. And last but not least, we want to hunt. We want to see what is important in our environment because we just don't want to rely on maybe forensic analysis. If we get breached, you want to see it before it happens. And for the generate queries part, I rely on a tool which is called Sigma. There is also just an ongoing workshop at this moment by Thomas Patzke. Um, this tool was created by Florian Roth, and Thomas Patzke is a big supporter of it. And what is Sigma doing? Sigma is an approach to create a generic language which you can, in which you define your rules and then push it out to the same system language of your choice. And at this moment, uh, there are a lot of systems supported. Um, I also <laughs> try to uh, work with the uh, Azure Log Analytics when I was working as a PFE, and uh, John Tuckner did a lot of this work, and I help with some information on this. So yay, also Azure Log Analytics is supported. Uh, but those guys are being awesome work here. And so this is the um, the base also behind event list to generate queries. And now I have an option to configure event list. And if you want to configure, or if you configure event list, you have the option to configure the Sigma path. So Sigma runs on Python. You need to have Sigma on your system. And if you just want to use event list to just let your queries fall out of the tool, configure Sigma. And like this, if you generate the queries, you can choose the um, the uh, theme solution of your choice. So in my case, of course, I configure it for MDATP. Um, you can also configure it for Splunk or for every other uh, tool that you want to. And since it takes some time, because uh, PowerShell calls Python. I have prepared some examples, which I show you. So first of all, MDATP, event list queries, you have um, already Sigma configured. Then you have in here the file event list queries MD. And in this file, you see, okay, it is um, 
it is in Markdown, so you can just copy and paste it into your uh, documentation system of your choice that supports Markdown. And you see here, uh, there's the title, you can see who's the author, and there you have the command to hunt down for this particular attack. You also have everything here in the event list queries txt if you just don't want to have the title and the rest of the query and you can just copy and paste it into your seam. And you have the sigma log txt because at this time not for every seam solution, every command is supported. So if you see that there is something not supported, you can contribute to Sigma, or you can ask the developers of your choice, hey, I really need this. Can you help me to get this working? And you have the YAML folder in which you have all the YAML configuration files that are needed by Sigma. So same thing here for Splunk. You have the same structure, but now here you have the Splunk syntax. You still have the, the, the queries in the txt file format to just copy it and the log. But you also have the, okay, it's still generating at this moment. I talk too fast. Um, so you also have the option, if it lets me at this moment, um, to generate uh, queries just in plain YAML format. You still have the YAML folder here, but in the queries MD file, in the markdown file, you see here is the plain YAML query, just if you want to use it from the YAML to convert it yourself somewhere. And if you don't have Sigma on your PC because you are running Sigma in your back end, you have the possibility to just create the Sigma commands that means you can just copy and paste it with a YAML folder and run it on your back end. So if you don't want to have Sigma or Python installed on your client, which can happen, then you can just copy and paste it and uh, paste it in your back end. And now the first query is generated. Um, so this is basically what happens if you don't have the Sigma path configured. If you don't have the Sigma path configured, then you just get the plain Python command to use it in your backend. So that's basically how event list works. Um, it gives you a lot of opportunities to improve your detection. And if you are interested in contributing to event list, I already said it, I already told you, please raise a pull request on GitHub and or reach out to me if you have ideas on how to support it. Um, I would be happy to have your work also included in the tool. At this moment, it is running on PowerShell, yes. Uh, if you have amazing ideas, uh, I also consider other languages. It was just um, not supposed to become that big. So that's why I started with PowerShell. And um, please contact me if you have ideas on how to improve it, on how to make it better. And yes, I hope that this tool helps you to go out and to improve the detection in your environment, in your organization, to protect your organization from attackers.
So, thank you. And I'm here for questions. We have a lot of questions already. Thank you. Uh, I think that's a, it's a great tool, and I really think that Microsoft should adopt this and get behind this because um, <laughs> it, it looks essential to me if you're working with uh, with event logs. Um, I just wanted to to confirm how how the attack integration works. So you load a GPO uh, yes. or baseline, which is basically a subset of, of GPOs, and then uh, you select. Uh, uh, so you can see which uh, attack uh, areas it touches, and then yes. you can select some of them, and then you export a subset of that baseline into a new GPO, right? Well, um, in a GPO, you have this um, certain part in the machine, Microsoft Windows NT Audit, Audit CSV, Mm -hmm. And this is the part which defines um, what will be audited. So um, I don't have policy analyzer here, unfortunately. Um, let me just... Oh, yeah. Okay, no, what, I, sh what? I should not uh, curse on recording. Sorry. No, what, what I meant is in, in the event list, uh, you, you first load a baseline. Yes. Then you see all the areas of attack that it touches, and then you can select some of the areas and then do an export again. I, I, I'm not sure if I understand your question. So um, you load the baseline or right. you import it. Right. There is a database behind. Mm -hmm. And from that point, what is your question? Because you showed how you can create your own GPO based on yes. which... Uh, parts of the attack framework you are interested in. Yes. So that creates a subset. Exactly. From so, the um, if you import a GPO and export it, it will not be the same GPO as you imported it because, um, you only have those, um, those audit categories and in the background you have the advanced audit categories and if you because we have it in the in the event list we have um, only the MITRE attack areas and techniques selected here and not the exact same baseline so we don't have the audit categories here so you can just from the events that I mapped to MITRE attack, they will be used to generate the GPO. This is how it works. Do mm -hmm. um, you see a use case what I could change here? No, I, I just wanted to verify how, how, how that, that part of the tool works. I thought it was going to create a subset of the baseline that you already imported. Or can you, without importing a baseline, just select the areas of attack and then create a GPO out of that without using a baseline at all? Yes, it does not use the baseline at okay, all. Great. It just uses the, the events behind. Yes, just to, so you map them and then it, it can create a GPO based on the mapping you already did. Exactly. Okay, cool. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Miriam, for the talk. Um, just so one of the issues I have is that a lot of times with Microsoft events, it's not one event. Yes. It can be up to four events. Yes. So like for confidential access, right? If you actually want to track access to a file, you basically need to monitor four events. How are you dealing with that? At this moment, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a very good idea uh, because there is room for improvement. At this moment, it is just a correlation of the events, or not not exactly a correl well a correlation to MITRE attack, but not between those events. So you still would need to open the seven hundred. 
54 pages document <laughs> to correlate it. But that's a very good hint. But so, I mean, are you not seeing any false positives in, in your mapping right now? Because there's a lot of stuff that should be at least one or two, more than one event. Well, it's software. <laughs> so I would not say that it has no false positives. But if you see a false positive, please raise, not your hand, but contact me and ping me on GitHub or on Twitter because I would love to fix it. Meanwhile, I may suggest that you integrate the taxonomy for false positives presented yesterday in the morning. No, I was so nervous for this call, uh, talk, so I barely attended other sessions. All right. Shame I, on me. I, I think on behalf of the speaker, I don't know if she's here, but you should probably watch her talk on YouTube. Kuba put it there already. She built a taxonomy for false positives for yeah. how to track those to direct the attention of the SOC into the most important KPIs. That would be very valuable for this tool. Awesome. Thank you. Pretty good and feedback. Any other uh, questions? Also ideas on improvements. Also happy to discuss it later. Yeah. I'm sorry, not a taxonomy for false positives, but a taxonomy for all events that come into your SOC. So it, it yeah. All right. Well, if no further questions, thank you, Miriam. That was a great tool.